So, Gemini 3 is finally here. And it's not just about Google launching a brand new model. If you really think about the announcement, it almost is Google overhauling their entire ecosystem. And that is bigger than beating any LLM benchmarks out there. Gemini 3 did a fantastic job in beating almost all benchmarks anyways. So I'm not debating that and I'm not going to get into that. If you really think about what the headlines should be, it should be about Google's amazing way of distribution of Gemini 3 models. If you think about the overall ecosystem, right, you could think of Google's ecosystem in three layers. Well, number one is the consumer layer, which is where this is for the first time when they have launched a Gemini model on day one in Google search. And it is a big deal for Google because search is a big deal for Google. So in AI mode that we have Gemini Pro right now. The second one is your Gemini app. So you already have the Gemini Pro in the Gemini app. The second layer is the enterprise layer, right? So that is where Gemini 3 is already available in Google Cloud's Vertex AI. It is also available already in the enterprise solution, which is Gemini Enterprise. And the third layer, and that is where I'm really excited about some of the announcements, is the developer layer. And that's where they have got this in Firebase Studio. They have got this in Android Studio. And they have launched a brand new agentic first IDE, which is Google Anti-Gravity. And in this video, I'm going to go into much more details around that and do demos and really test it out to see how cool it is and if it is different or not compared to some of the existing amazing tools like Cursor and others as well. So let's dive in and look into Google Anti-Gravity and run some of the demos and see how the results come out to be. All right, so what you're seeing on the screen is the default screen of Anti-Gravity. And you might already see that this looks very similar to some of the IDs out there, such as VS Code, Cursor, and it has got a little bit of an agentic workflow here as well. But things start to get pretty interesting when you switch to something called as the agent manager. And the agent manager is the approach which Google is taking where the idea is to have multiple parallel conversations with agents and simultaneously working on multiple different projects, right? So the default here is something they have done with as playgrounds, as you can see that these are independent workspaces. But then you can actually create multiple workspaces and start working on those individual projects per se, right? And then workspaces is where your files get saved, but Playground is where you can start something pretty quickly. And then once you're satisfied, then you can move your files into the Playground. So we are going to create something pretty quickly here. And I'm not going to start with a simple task because I really want to see if this can take the agentic mode and get to an answer. So I want to build something like a no-code machine learning SaaS application where I want, I want it to allow the user to upload a bunch of their files and then just select the objective and then it needs to go figure out the right algorithms for us and then it needs to run the machine learning behind the scene, the actual machine learning using scikit-learn, etc. and then give us some evaluation criteria and visualizations. It's not a straightforward ask and I want to see how this goes, right? So I'm starting with a planning mode here. There are two modes available here. One is the planning and one is the fast. I want to look at the plan first and see how it performs, right? So off you go. I have asset to start building and it is starting to think and here we are using the Gemini 3 Pro version. So it is already starting to think and focus on the main portion which is implementing algorithmic selection which is the core aspect of the house and it's starting to looking at the, the back end and stuff like that. So the idea is it should be thinking and it immediately gave me a beautiful task here. So it is describing how it is going to run. So it's project initializing, back end development front-end development and then integration verification. A pretty good step here. And then the next th thing which it does is it actually gives the overall implementation plan and it waits for me to provide a signal, right? It just writes down the whole goal once again. And then like intelligence section, it will use like a keyboard-based stuff. And then it is, it is starting to propose what should be the back-end, what should be the front-end and stuff like that, right? So it's a pretty detailed and you saw in action like how quickly it was able to do. So once I'm satisfied with this, I can click on the proceed button. At any point, if I feel that it needs to have some changes, I can actually like write a comment and then the agent will take care of it as it is processing this. So I'm going to click on just proceed here just for the sake of this demo. And then it is going to start looking into these tasks one by one and see if it can actually get it done itself. Also, obviously, as this is an editor here, it, you can see that the moment I move to the editor, the entire context gets moved. So that is what is the key aspect that the context never gets lost. So you can seamlessly move between an editor as well as an agentic version and the context is completely 
kept into kept into place for you, right? It's, it is continuing to work and you can see that it is taking some of the actions. So it is giving me some recommended extensions, very interesting. But for the moment, I'm, I'm not really taking any actions. I just want to see how the agent performs, right? So now it is asking me to take a decision here. So initializing React project and installing dependencies. I absolutely wanted to do that. So I'm going to say yes. And now you can see that it is running the code on my behalf and it, it is continuing to do. So we'll give it a second and see how it responds and what it comes back with. Okay, it seems that we hit a snag because of the Gemini 3 Pro higher versions overload here. So I've asked the lower version to continue. So let's see what it does. So you can already see that it has developed some backend code and some frontend code. And it has also brought like a data set just as a dummy data set to begin with. So it is definitely doing a great job here. All right, looks like it has completed its job and it has done a fantastic job in creating what I asked for. And it has also created an amazing walkthrough, right? So this is where it again talks about the objective and this is where it gives you the implementation summary. And it provides all of the, all of the components and stuff like that. It also provides the testing results. So if based on the data that it had, and this is where it gets super interesting because it has the capability to also open the Chrome browser and it basically takes screenshots of how the interface is behaving. So that is what it has done. And it has, you can see it has done a fantastic job. So if I click on this, this is the front end that it has actually created for which it has taken a screenshot. Now I want to show you the data that I'm planning to have here. So this is a simple data set that I have where I have customer ID, age, gender, annual income and all of that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload this data set here and what it, it needs to understand, it immediately counted this. And I'm going to say that, hey, I want to create customer segmentation. And then I'm just going to click on analyze. It's going to say that, hey, as an AI, I'm recommending K-Mean. So I'm going to say, okay, go ahead and execute. And there you go. So it has done this. And these are the different clusters that it has created just based on that data set. And it has obviously used the right algorithm, which is K-Mean's clustering for segmentation. So it's very powerful. Now, what I did was I also asked it to add some additional scenarios. So, you know, three more scenarios, regression, classification, time series and add some dummy data for this so that I can run a demo. So we, I'm just going to wait on that. And then once it is complete, I'm going to come back and show the new interface to you as well. All right, seems like it has done its job. And again, a cool thing here is it can record the whole browser activity, which you're seeing over here. So what it has really done is it has added a bunch of additional capabilities. That means now I can upload different kinds of data set and it should be able to understand that, right? So here I have sales data set, so it should be able to forecast. Then I have this uh, stock price data set as well. So sales can be used for regression. So stock price can be used for time series. And this one is the customer data, so it can be used for classification. So all of these different scenarios, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this I now and then upload different uh, data sets in front of you. So I'm going to upload the customer data set. And I'm going to say that, okay, create a classification based on customer churn. So this is a new objective that I'm giving. And then it is saying that, okay, you should use random forest as for classification. That's pretty awesome. And then I'm just going to run the algorithm and you can see that it has done a great job. And in terms of accuracy and stuff like that, and it is providing what are the different features which are important, right? This is pretty much how a no code tool should look like. And it is doing this on an actual data set. The next one is I'm going to say that I've got the stock price data and I want you to go ahead and predict the price of the stock and here because it's a time series data it's gonna do the time series forecasting and there you go so it's able to predict the value of the stock for the next five periods right that is one two three four five so that's pretty much what i wanted here it has taken scikit learn which is the the python library which has some amazing machine learning algorithms and i wanted it to be real and that was the test i wanted it to give right so here you can see that the amount of code that it has written and it is actually using has created like the actual data sets that I could use and it has already done the testing and stuff like that in the background. So it does a pretty good job in terms of really creating multiple different artifacts, creating like plan, the whole plan. It can also give us like an implementation scenario. So really the way Google is approaching this and really help developers or people who don't even have a strong coding background like this is where 
I could go ahead and really understand what it is doing in the back end and then play with it. And in the meanwhile, like if I had ran like multiple other agents, then it would have it would have given me that where it is in terms of the other conversation that it is having. So this is what I wanted to show you today. This is one of the core announcements as part of this whole Gemini 3. And I'm going to continue building and showcasing some more interesting demos. For example, the next one that I'm thinking, which is, can I build an ADK based agent using anti-gravity? So in the, in the previous one, I had already created an ADK agent using Visual Builder. But now since we have a new announcement here, I want to then use this to create an ADK agent and then maybe connect it to a UI, custom UI, right? So probably it would be much more easier here. For that, let's wait for the next video. But I hope this was helpful and valuable. You got to see this new anti-gravity interface and we ran an end-to-end -end demo of how an interface look, would look like and how UI would look like, right? So then once we're satisfied, we can deploy this to production and we can just simply ask the agent here to do that for us, okay? So if you like the video, as always, please hit that like button and please do subscribe. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I will see you in the next one.